Hey, what's up guys? This is Google's new Nest Wi-Fi Pro. I'm gonna unbox this thing, I'm gonna do some speed tests and wired and wireless backhaul, range test, everything. This is gonna be a full-on review like I normally do with mesh systems. So this comes in a two pack and retails for $299, not $99 in the US. They also have a three pack that retails for $399 if you need more. So both of these are identical. You get two ports, gigabit ports, and they're not auto sensing. So the modem, the internet is going to connect to this guy. And this other guy, you could connect it to one of your devices. You could connect it to an unmanaged switch to extend your network. Or if you were going to do wired backhaul, you could connect this guy to the globe of this one to extend the network. And you know, middle is the power port. So a really nice shape overall, generally speaking, very, very shiny and not too fingerprintish. I was expecting more fingerprints, but I really don't really see many fingerprints at all, if any. So we get the power plugs, very, very similar in design, which is kind of nice that they spent I don't know, I kind of appreciate it that they put more into detail to get these to match. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. It is 100 to 240 volts, if you guys are wondering. You get the same exact plug here. And it looks like there's an ethernet cable here. It does not say if it's Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi 6, if it's Cat 6 or Cat 5e or Cat 7. Uh, but I'm assuming it's at least Cat 5e that supports gigabit speeds, since these are gigabit ports. Unfortunately, there is no fast port on it, like a 2.5 or something faster than that. Same exact thing, and we have our guide right here. And you do use the Google Home app. It's been two days since I've unboxed this thing, using it as my main mesh system, and so far so good. So no drops, something abnormal. Super easy to set up using the Google Home app, which I already had because I have Google Home speakers and other Google devices. Now in that time, I had a chance to do the speed test range test. I have all those numbers here. And for my testing devices, I used my iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device, and a combination of my Pixel 7 Pro and Galaxy S22 Ultra, which are my Wi-Fi 6E devices. Now both of these gave very similar results, so I just went with the pixel numbers this time around. Starting with internet speed test. Now, no matter how fast your router is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, assuming the router itself can even go that fast, which in my case, this can. So my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. Now, when I use my computer that's hooked up via ethernet to this thing, I can get to those speeds no problem. Now, looking at the results for the Wi-Fi devices, there's definitely a reduction in speed compared to the ethernet. However, these are typical numbers that I see. Wi-Fi 6 did normal, Wi-Fi 6 e did slightly better. Now, to truly test this mesh system, we have to get rid of the public speed test server and the ISP from the equation. So I basically make my computer into my local speed test server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer on the single router configuration, on the wireless and wired backhaul configurations, I go from the secondary node, which then jumps to the primary one, then it goes to the server. Looking at the numbers, there's a huge increase in performance, both for Wi-Fi 6 and for Wi-Fi 6E. However, it is worth noting that Wi-Fi 6E can actually go faster than gigabit, assuming an S Wi-Fi Pro had a port faster than gigabit. So if this had a 2.5 gigabit port on it, I think it would reach 15, 1600 megabits per second pretty easily, both for download and upload. Moving on to wireless backhaul. This is the most convenient way of hooking up your Nest Wi-Fi Pro. So if this guy's your main router that's hooked up to your modem, this guy is one or two rooms away. In my case, it was around 40 feet away or so. And it's wirelessly talking to this guy. So just hook it up to power and it just expands your Wi-Fi coverage. We got some good speeds. Now I say good because it's not bad, but it's also not great. I have seen better speeds than this, but I've also seen worse speeds. So we're gonna say with, it got some good numbers for Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E. For the last configuration, it's wired backhaul, otherwise known as ethernet backhaul. And that's when you have an ethernet cable making its way from the secondary one to the primary one. And you can have an unmanaged switch in between them if you want one. So this creates, typically speaking, the most stable and fastest connection. Now looking at the numbers, we could see this is true in this case because the wired backhaul numbers match the single router configuration numbers, very, very close. So gave some pretty good performance over that. 
Now we get into range tests. So range will vary based on location. If you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers or wireless interference around, all of this stuff can negatively affect your range. So in my case, I'm in more of an open area, not super open, but fairly open. And looking at my numbers at 20 feet away inside my place, very good numbers, hardly a drop in performance. At 50 feet, this is when I'm outside and still getting some really good numbers. And it takes me all the way up to 250 feet. So for something of this price range, I would say that's pretty good. For setup and configuration, use the Google Home app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. So you click the little plus sign on the top left, it finds the Nest Wi-Fi Pro, it sets it up, it asks you to pick a Wi-Fi name and a password, which you can use the same as your previous router, and all your devices should automatically connect to this new one. However, it is important to note that the Wi-Fi name and the password are both case sensitive. Now, once it's all set up, it's pretty easy to use. It kind of, it's more designed for Google to automatically take care of everything, for you to just kind of connect to Wi-Fi and you're good to go. Now, as a result of that, because it's simplified, it does kind of limit some of the options. Now, it does give you some of the important ones like DHCP, port forwarding, UPnP, stuff like that, you're good to go. But if you wanna separate out SSID names, you're kind of limited on that. So you can't do that, basically. You get one SSID for the 2.4, 5 gig, and the 6 gigahertz band. So, yeah. Now, something cool about this is that you get a family Wi-Fi option where it sets up parental controls and it's kind of cool. You're, basically, your kids' devices will connect to that and you have full control over it. So it, it's kind of awesome from that perspective. And if you guys are wondering, hey, can you find out which device is connected to which node? The answer is yes, you can do that. And you can also pause devices even on your main network or your guest network. Now, is it worth getting these? Why or why not? Well, it honestly depends on your situation. So I'm gonna say this would be a great fit for anyone with internet speeds of up to gigabit that's planning on using wired backhaul, that's looking for a budget system that in my mind is aesthetically pleasing and it's not a fingerprint magnet, which I honestly thought it would be, but it's really not. So I think Google did a pretty good job of pricing this thing for the performance you get out of it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below and as always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.